Mainz in London 2016. Here we are now uh, again in our little studio with uh, Patrick Highsmith from Pure Energy. And we want to talk about his terrific company and of course about lithium. Patrick, good morning. Good morning, Jürgen. <laughs> so how's the show so far? All good? Oh, very good. It's, uh, yeah. it's a great conference. London's such a dynamic place to be. We can have many other meetings while we're here. So it's a great use of our time to be here. Perfect. I always like to hear that. That's important. <laughs> Let's come to your company, Pure Energy. Where are you based? What are you doing? Sure. Pure Energy Minerals is a lithium explorer and developer. We're traded on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Our head office is in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. But our number one project is the Clayton Valley South Lithium Brine Project in Nevada. And of course, Nevada is home to the only lithium production in North America, our neighbor, the Silver Peak Mine. Mm -hmm. And we adjoin them in, in Clayton Valley, great mining jurisdiction and a, and a growing lithium resource with some very exciting new technology that we're working on. Mm, fantastic. When you say Nevada, um, well, it's also home of uh, Tesla factory, isn't it? Sure, exactly. The <laughs> Tesla Gigafactory is under construction just east of yeah. Reno, Nevada. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a conditional supply agreement with Tesla Motors. So when and if we're successful wow. in building our mine, uh, we've discussed with Tesla selling them some lithium. It's a great first customer to have for a project mm -hmm. like us. Well, fantastic. Uh, so that means you want to go in production for sure. Yeah. But what, what is the status now so far, resource-wise? What, what, what do you have? Right. We've been exploring in Clayton Valley really for about three years now. So uh, kind of before this initial, this lithium boom we're in now. And we have built an inferred resource that contains about 800,000 tons of lithium carbonate equivalent. We mm -hmm. call that LCE mm -hmm. in what, the what business. What is it in particular for our viewers just to, as an explanation? Sure. What the, does it mean? A lithium brine deposit is really a liquid. It's different mm -hmm. than most forms of mining, a bit like oil and gas. So there's very salty water down there. It contains lithium dissolved in it. Mm -hmm. And so we calculate a resource based on the contained lithium dissolved in that salty water. And that's the form of our inferred resource. So we've drilled holes, sampled that brine, and we have an idea of the lithium concentration and how much is there. And that's how we report it in terms of lithium carbonate equivalent. Okay, great. Um, I you want to go in production. So what work have you done so far? You are drilling right now? Is We're actively yeah. drilling right now. We have two drill rigs on the property, mm -hmm. drilling some of the deepest wells that have ever been drilled in, in Clayton Valley. Oh. So we're looking at the deepest parts of the basin where that brine is pristine, and we hope to see there that we have good strong grades at depth and the potential to grow our resource at depth. So we have two rigs now, but we've been working on this inferred resource to advance it towards a PEA, a preliminary economic assessment mm -hmm. that we expect to deliver in the first quarter of 2017. Ah, so that's one of your major targets then for next year. <laughs> exactly. And, th and that means we've been doing yeah. a lot of process engineering, a lot of metallurgy work in the meantime. Mm -hmm. And we're actually proposing to use a new technology that's not been used commercially before to produce lithium. But the idea is to use a, a solvent extraction technique that does not require the huge evaporation ponds that you see associated with oh. most lithium brine operations. Okay. That means we believe it will be more sustainable environmentally and we're going to re-inject the, the brine back into the ground when we get the lithium out. So it has wow. a much lower impact on the water resources, yeah. Yeah. and we believe it will have improved efficiencies over evaporation ponds, yeah. and competitive or maybe even better costs. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought, yeah? yeah, because when you don't have to store, the, let's say, in, in, in the big ponds on the one hand, and exactly. you, you uh, have no waste removal, I would call it, I think that's a yeah, fantastic idea. Yeah, that's right. We, having a lower environmental impact is certainly a plus in today's world as well, and we mm -hmm. believe that will happen there. But you know, we're in a supply crunched world for lithium, and these evaporation ponds, they take 18 months to two years to get mm -hmm. your lithium. Mm -hmm. Whereas the plant we would propose to build, you turn it on and you start making lithium hours or a few days later. Oh, really? Much quicker to market. Wow. And that's one of the things we're most excited about. Absolutely. And um, have you tested it so far, let's say, like in a little pilot plant, I would call it? Um, um, and is it then scalable? That's Can you go on on big volumes That's also. That's correct. That's the steps yeah. we take in mining, mm -hmm. right? First, we did a bench scale test at the mm -hmm. laboratory. Results were good. We reported those in 2015. Yeah. We've just reported that we've completed a pilot plant in which we tested about 20 tons of brine, much larger sample. We've processed it right the way through and we've made battery grade lithium hydroxide from that. We'll be announcing the technical results from that study here in early December very soon. Mm -hmm. So that will be a main ingredient in that PEA slated for February. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, Let's, let's look a bit in the future. I mean, um, you have the pilot plant, let's assume everything works well. You, you are getting the results you want to see, of course. When can we expect production? 
Well, of course, it's hard to say, and, yeah. and we have to follow the various milestones of public reporting, but mm -hmm. that PEA is very important. Only four lithium brine projects have ever made the PEA stage. Mm -hmm. One of those is now in production in Argentina. One, it was a project that I helped discover in Argentina that's gone to feasibility study. Mm -hmm. This would be only the fifth, so that's a key milestone. From mm -hmm. there, we will work towards a feasibility study if we have a favorable PEA with those mm -hmm. recommendations. That'll be sort of a 12 to 18 month process. Okay. And from there, as you know, you'd have a bankable reserve with a successful uh, yeah. feasibility study, and we can secure the financing. Nevada is a great place to permit, mm -hmm. so it's hard to say precisely, but we think no, sort of a few idea. years, okay. and very similar to the timeline for full production at the Gigafactory, which is slated for 2020. So yeah, somewhere in that time frame should yeah. fit well. Yeah, absolutely, and I think also this would be, uh, uh, let's, let's, let's put it that way, it, it fits perfect when you are hitting the big supply deficit then in the market. That's right, that's right. right. There's just no way that new large lithium mines can come online mm -hmm. fast enough yeah. to assuage this demand stress that we have right now. Yeah. So we think we need to be realistic, we need to do good technical work, but we're the only resource in Nevada, so we're well ahead of most of our competitors, mm -hmm. and we're knocking down these important milestones. And as you said, there's just about no way we can alleviate this supply crunch until mm -hmm. well into the 2020s, and we hope to be part of that. No, I hope so too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, of course, all the work you are performing needs money. What is money in the bank? Are you financed for that? We're well financed right now, Jochen. We raised some money this summer with Dundee uh, mm -hmm. out of Toronto. We did mm -hmm. a nice little uh, private placement there. And we're well funded. We have about $6 million in the bank, which is more than enough to complete our PEA and advance us nicely to the feasibility. Mm -hmm. Of course, with a PEA in hand, we don't expect to have any problem talking about to folks to raise the next round of money for yeah. a full feasibility yeah. because when you understand how the lithium market works, there are strategic investors, there are corporate groups that are buyers of lithium, mm -hmm. and of course there are end users like Tesla and others that, who are all interested in seeing new mines come online. Mm -hmm. So most often in the lithium business, we find some creative financing solutions that don't all involve diluted financings for your yeah. shareholders. There's other ways to bring in partners, potential off-takers to help secure that funding. Of course. Of course. So we think access to capital in the lithium business right now is excellent. Mm, fantastic. How much money you think you need to go in production. Just an idea. Do we talk about 50, 100, 500 million dollars? Well, we wouldn't want to proceed unless this was a nice big project. So mm -hmm. let's just talk about some comparables because I can do that. On the Sol de Vida project in Argentina, which Galaxy controls, uh, Lithium One discovered that. I was the CEO of Lithium One at that mm -hmm. time. And we've run pre-feasibilities and they've since run feasibilities there that suggest a very large project like that might cost 350 million dollars in remote mm -hmm. Argentina yeah. uh, for a long mine life though and a very strong project. I would say that our project would be of similar scale. We forecast mm -hmm. a large lithium operation there and we believe that comparable projects to ours would be in the in the 200 to 250 million dollar capex range. Of course, yeah, but it's still makeable. That's absolutely yeah. doable. It's not quite the same thing as having to build a billion dollar gold mine exactly. or a three billion dollar copper yeah, project. Yeah, yeah. And that's one of the things about lithium. We can access the capital, we can build a project, and one junior has already joined the ranks of lithium producers or a cobre, yeah. and another junior galaxy is about to to do so again in Argent in Australia, excuse me. Yeah. So it's we've already shown that junior companies can do this, and that's one reason we like being in the lithium space. Yeah, and definitely you have the uh, the market in front of your door. That's right. We yeah. we literally it's not only test. We I literally mean, uh, take calls every exactly. week. You okay yeah. about can we buy lithium? Unfortunately, we yeah. can't yet sell you lithium, but yeah. we hope to in the near future. And and of yeah. course, Tesla has been uh, our initial discussions with Tesla led to this off take mm. agreement, and uh, there could be others. And for, quite frankly, this is still a bit of an industrial mineral, unlike mm. gold. You don't have a mine in the lithium business unless you have customers. And Absolutely. having that first customer is very important. Yeah. You know, and I also think, I mean, you are uh, then based in the U.S. I mean, Ford, General Motors, Mercedes, Alabama, BMW. That's Volkswagen right. Volkswagen is there, yeah? And with Trump, I mean, make America great again. They want to see the production in the U.S. You are in the U.S., so... Absolutely. It's you have such all, a great all the advantages fit. on your side, it's right? It's such a great fit. And Tesla yeah. even said that, of course. They were going to find a domestic source of lithium yeah. for the Gigafactory. Yeah. And they hope they've done so, I'm sure, in their supply agreement with us. Yeah. But you're exactly right. It's a growing business. Companies are locating in the U.S. Uh, Tesla, of course, will be the first large-scale cathode manufacturer in the U.S. Mm. at the Gigafactory if they're mm. successful. So uh, that's a game changer. And it's great to be right there in the forefront. There are only three or four countries of significance for lithium production. And we're glad that the U.S. is 
one of them, and of course, it's, Argentina is a great new jurisdiction with the new president there as well. But um, we think the U.S. is a great place to be. And Nevada, while it's called the Silver State, we like to joke soon it'll be the Lithium State. Yeah, <laughs> super, perfect. Well, then all the best for that. Merry Christmas. Thank you very much, and uh, we keep fingers crossed. And I think a very compelling story. Uh, thank you very much. Hope <laughs> to see you next year, and Merry Christmas as well. Definitely. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It was Patrick Heismith, uh, the uh, CEO of uh, Pure Energy, and yeah, you heard it. In approximately two to three years from here now on, they will be in production. Hopefully, 250 million dollars around might be the uh, the capex they need, and uh, they've already. Tesla in the game here. They signed a contract with them, and uh, I think this is a yeah a very very big sign of trust and confidence. And uh, when you have uh, your uh, market in front of your door, that helps always a lot. And uh, so from that perspective, I think the company is uh, well situated, well uh, set up with six million dollar in the bank. Uh, they have enough money yeah to fulfill all their works. And in Q1 there will be the the uh, PFS coming out. So check out the company. Thanks for watching us. Bye bye from London.